Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Have the Radia tapes revealed that the former chief mentor of the CIA has behaved improperly or simply foolishly and indiscreetly? That's the key issue I should explore today with Tarun Das himself. Mr. Das, let me start with a basic question. Several of your conversations with Neera Radia have been published by Outlook, by the Indian Express, by the Sunday Guardian. Will you accept that these transcripts are broadly accurate? Sadly, yes, because obviously I was on tape, I was talking, and I don't dispute that. You don't dispute the authenticity? Not at all. Then, in that case, let's come to some of the things you've said. In the conversations published by the Indian Express, you say you pitched big time for Kamal Nath to be made surface transport minister. In the conversations published by the Sunday Guardian, you agree to push for a Raja to become telecom minister. Doesn't this make you a lobbyist or a political fixer? No, not really. Um, I'm not political and I'm not a fixer. Um, we are talking. Elections are over. Everybody is speculating about the cabinet. And it is in that context and in that time that we are talking about who should be which minister and who should be something Except else. Except you're not simply expressing your preference for who you would like to see as a minister. You're actually saying that you pushed big time, that's the word you use, yeah. for Kamal Nath to become surface transport. Oh, absolutely. In all my conversations with friends and others, I'm saying Kamal Nath is a doer. Infrastructure needs to be built. Let's get Kamal But Nath. you also, according to the Sunday Guardian, agreed to push for A. Raja to be telecom minister. Not really. I, this I don't recall. I haven't seen Sunday Guardian, but this I don't Twice recall. Twice in the Sunday Guardian transcript you say, okay, I'll talk to them. Okay, if I have said that, it's like I want peace. I don't really want to pursue this conversation. And I, because I don't know Mr. Raja, and I, I do know Kamal Nath, and I have known him for a long time. You see, it's not just that you agreed to push for Kamal Nath and a Raja. In another conversation transcribed by Outlook and on their website, you even agreed to personally lobby the Prime Minister to have Sunil Arora appointed Chairman and Managing Director of Air India. What's the justification no, for that? No, I, I didn't agree to that. I mean, I was, I'm listening. I'm listening and I'm saying yes and all that, but I did not agree to lobby and I did not lobby. Well, whether you did or didn't lobby is another matter, but you did agree to lobby. You actually say in that transcript, yes, I'll go and talk to the Prime Minister. Secondly, there is a further conversation on the Outlook website where Neera Radia is talking to Sunil Arora and asks him to pr prepare pointers which you can then take to the Prime Minister. Isn't that corroboration that you were going to speak to the Prime Minister? It sounds like that, but it didn't happen like that. When you say it didn't happen, you didn't actually meet the Prime Minister and lobby for Sunil Arora? Not at all. But Never. You, but you do concede that in terms of these conversations, you agreed to do so. You may not have done it, yeah. but you agreed to do so. Yeah. Yeah. You concede that? Yes. Tell me this. People might find it a little odd that you accept that you agreed to lobby for Kamal Nath, that you pushed for Raja to become telecom minister. You at least agreed to lobby for Sunil Arora, even if you didn't. Why then can't you accept that you're a lobbyist? Because I did not lobby. I mean, I did not do all these things which we talked about. These are casual conversations. These are informal conversations. Uh, for me, did not give me a serious agenda. My work is essentially with policy. This is, I'm not concerned with individual positions and individual uh, jobs. Were you in that case deliberately misleading Nira Radia? I was not deliberately misleading her, but I was uh, not perhaps being completely truthful with her as to what I would do and what I would not do. In other words, you were giving the impression that you were saying yes? Yeah. Actually, you did say yes, yes, but you had no intention to deliver. I had no intention to deliver, unfortunately, and I, and I apologize to her for that. So there was a deception there? There was a, not a deception, but certainly a... Uh, push back on my part. I'm, I'm listening. She's arguing with me. She's telling me that, you know, this is important. This needs to be done. But uh, So for appearances sake, I'm, you agree, I'm, I'm, agree I'm, but I'm that's not, it. I'm not comfortable, so I'm, you know, for the sake of basically closing the conversation, uh, you know, leave it at that. All right, let's move on. Yeah. In another conversation published by 
outlook as well as by the Sunday Guardian, you are asked by Neera Radia to deliver a message to the Congress. She wants you to tell the Congress that they mustn't speak to Diana Di Maran. She says he's the wrong person. They should speak instead to Kani Mozi. Did you deliver that message? No. <laughs> no way. You didn't? No way. But again, isn't there something peculiar? You agreed to lobby for Kamal Nath, for Raja, for Sunil Arora as well. Yes. And those are perhaps damning things to agree to do, but you agreed to do it. But when she asked you to deliver a seemingly innocuous message, you didn't agree to do that. Why? Karan, I'm not in this game. I'm not in this game of lobbying for individual people. I'm not in the game but you of conveying messages. you agreed to do messages. it even if you didn't do it. Yeah. You agreed to do it. it. It is a way of, you know, uh, basically closing conversations. Okay. Because I'm not going to go down that road. So I never have. Saying yes was a quicker way of closing a conversation Absolutely. rather than resisting. Absolutely. Let's focus a bit on what you said specifically about Kamal Nath. You say in your conversations that he's a doer, but you also say that he takes a 15% cut. Doesn't that make him corrupt? I'm not saying he takes a 15% cut. I said something like he can, he can, he can take his 15% cut and do national service. I've, I've read the tape uh, and the transcript. Aren't you playing with words? When you say he can take, that clearly indicates right, that fine, he's a man who's fine. prone to taking. Yeah. But that is a loose conversation. We are all the time gossiping with each other. I probably will have to apologize to many more people for saying all kinds of things about them. Can I interrupt? Yeah. It may be a loose conversation, but you do even in that looseness make it clear that you think he takes a 15% cut. Doesn't that make him corrupt? I don't know. I have no evidence. It was an irresponsible remark on my part, and I have made a public apology for that. You have no evidence that he's ever taken 15%? I have no evidence. So when you said he takes 15%, you were saying that without any proof or evidence? Absolutely. And absolutely irresponsibly. But there's something further that's very strange. When you say he takes 15%, you're clearly saying he's a man who makes money. And yet at the same time, you're also saying that you were pitching big time, and big time was your exact word, yeah. for him to be made surface transport minister. Why were you pitching for a man who you believe makes money to be a minister? No. I don't believe that he makes money, all right? I am making a loose, irresponsible remark about him. That's one. On the other side, I have seen him as a doer, somebody who gets things done. And I'm thinking infrastructure building is so critical to India. You need a guy who is going to be able to build infrastructure rapidly. Some people say that actually what you were suggesting is this. Even if he takes a 15% cut, at least he delivers. We need a man who delivers. Let's accept that he makes money on the side doing so. Is that not, your intention? No, not at all. You're sure? Absolutely. You say to the Indian Express, my public apologies to Mr. Nath. Has he forgiven you? You have to ask him. I don't know. Have you spoken to him after these conversations? I have not spoken to him. I have written to him. Has he uh, replied? He has not replied, but I have seen a quote from him in the newspapers saying that he's received my letter. Do you get the feeling when he hasn't replied that he's shunning you and avoiding you? No clue. That you have to check with him. Let's come to something you say. I, I, if he is shunning me and avoiding me, I don't blame him. Let's come to something you say in another conversation about Anand Sharma. He had just become industry and commerce minister. You say, we'll have to brief him, educate him. What did you mean by that? Educate him, meaning on trade policy issues. It's a very technical subject. Export, import, WTO, and all of that. Uh, his background was from external affairs ministry, and therefore educate in the sense of briefing and giving him data and, and bringing him up to speed. Some people have interpreted the word educate to mean you have to control him, make sure he does no. what you want. No, 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 not at all. Have yes, you, in the last 18 months, educated him, to use your word? I have uh, spent some time with him in the first few months of his uh, cabinet position. Educating him? Uh, briefing him, um, if you can call that education, on issues. But uh, education is not to be taken in a negative sense, Karan. It's a very positive word of helping him to do his job well. Let's come to a conversation published by Outlook magazine some three weeks ago. 
in that conversation you say to Neera Radia, if this thing works out, what will be the deal? And she replies, it will be five acres of land at a massive concession. What was that about? <laughs> For 52 years, I am a soccer fan, football. I studied in Manchester, watched Manchester United every alternate Saturday. Right? That passion for soccer is transferred to my sons also. My elder son runs an NGO which teaches, coaches, underprivileged children in soccer. Uh, Outlook magazine did a beautiful one-page story on him and what he does. And, and if I can read just that headline, bend the ball over social barriers. It's a new egalitarian approach to football. So these five acres at a massive his, concession his, his were for that I, NGO? His dream, which I share, is to have a facility for underprivileged children where they can have two grounds, a changing room, a fitness center, a cafeteria. No, this is something which... I think I understand that's what, what you're we're talking about. In a letter that you wrote to the editor of Outlook, which was published by that magazine, you say, this related to search for land for a not-for-profit NGO managed by my son, right. which organizes sports coaching and training for the underprivileged. Right. I'll accept that. But skeptics will say, can he prove that's what it was intended for? And that behind the disguise, it wasn't intended for something else. I don't need five acres of land for myself. I live in a small apartment and I'm happy there. Um, this is for this. I, we've talked to many people. So you're giving me your word of honor that this was actually for your son's NGO and not for anything else? Oh, completely, completely. I mean, no question. And the search continues. We still haven't got that. But you're giving me your word of honor. Absolutely. Let me sum this up by putting it like this. In your own eyes today, and you've had time to reflect, you've had time to think, you've had time to regret, have you behaved improperly or merely indiscreetly and foolishly? Indiscreetly and foolishly, uh, very much so. And um, so when you ask me for this you know, uh, interview, um, knowing you to be tough and independent, I accept it because uh, I want to say this. I was foolish and I was indiscreet. Can I put something else to you? Sure. Many people say, and I'm using a colloquialism, that he's behaved like a bloody fool. Would you oh, accept that? Oh, absolutely. More than a bloody fool. Are you embarrassed? Very much so. Very. Deeply. Has this whole episode brought tears to your eyes? Yes. And to my family, who have been embarrassed by this. The family has suffered. Absolutely. They're not used to this kind of thing. They have seen me working for an institution all my life, working with policy, working with, for public service. So this is a very alien experience for all of us. Let's take a break at that point. I want to come back and put you in part two, what others have had to say about the Neera Radia tapes sure. and ask you to respond. That's in a moment's time. See you after the break. Welcome back to an exclusive interview with the former chief mentor of the CII, a man who by some is today questioned in terms of his integrity, by others in terms of his judgment, Tarun Das. Mr. Das, Praful Patel has gone on record to call Neera Rajya an economic terrorist. In the eyes of many people, you're seen as an accomplice of hers. What does that make you? I don't know whether... Um She's an econ economic terrorist or, you know, my, my exposure to public relations firms started with Dilip Cherian and continued with Prema Sagar of Genesis. And uh, Neera Radia is the third uh, person but that I have Neera worked Radia with. But if Neera Radia today is being called a terrorist mm. and you're seen as an accomplice, are you scared that's how you too are seen? Well, I hope I'm not seen like that. I'm... Uh, not a terrorist. Um, so far, I'm not sure, about, apart from very, very aggressive lobbying, 
what exactly she has done which is illegal. We have yet to see. Investigations are on. Let me then put something else to you. Yeah. Until very recently, you were chief mentor of CII. You've been associated with that organization for four decades, maybe more. Have you today embarrassed the CII? I probably have. It's for CII to say, but I probably have. There are so many people that in one sense or another you've embarrassed. Yes. Kamal Nath. Perhaps Neera Radia, the CII, your own family. Do you say sorry to them? Oh, absolutely. 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 Publicly to Kamal Nath, which you know, uh, privately to others, like my family. What lessons have you learned from this experience? Well, I'll have to stop talking button my lip. Um, I'm, I, I'll come to tapping separately, but uh, I'm concerned that I uh, was indiscreet, which I have mentioned earlier. And uh, I'll, as my wife says, learn to talk less and to be brief. So now when you speak on the phone, are you guarded and careful? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. In fact, the phone calls have dramatically reduced both have ways. people become scared of talking to you? People are still talking to me. I, I don't think they're scared of talking to me. But there's a lot more uh, conversations I find on the landline and less on the cell phone. Has people's attitude to you changed? No. I must say that uh, that, that uh, friendship, warmth, respect continues. Many people believe that publishing these conversations was an invasion of privacy. But perhaps as many believe that it has served a real purpose because it has shown the mechanism of government, the way influence is peddled, the way suggestions are made. It suggested a sort of, conspiracy may be the wrong word, but an association of top people conniving to suit their interests. Do you think the, just, the revelations were justified? Do you think it should have been published? I think the private conversations and conversations which have nothing to do with whatever the allegations were for which the tapping was done. I think these should not have been published. I think this is not only about me, it's about everybody else who is involved. Has this damaged India as Deepak Parikh has suggested, as S. Gopal Krishna of Infosys has suggested, has this damaged India? That part I think is transitory, Karan. I, I don't think that is uh, India's resilience, India's strong points are so many. This is, this is a passing phase, I would say. Uh, I don't see that as, uh, as an issue right now. Arun Jaitley, the leader of the opposition, has gone on record to say the desire and capacity of big business to influence makes you wonder if any ethical leadership is left in Indian industry. I think he is being um, uh, very strong on that. I think there is ethical leadership in industry. There are some very fine people. I think one of the things which I try to continuously say to Neera Radia, and it comes out, that you know, if she has access to major industry leaders, bring them together, align them, because corporate wars are not good for them and not good for India. If you get a chance again, will you talk to Neera Radia or will you refuse to take the call? I will talk to her. You will talk to her? I will talk to her. Tarun Das, a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much.